I am in the middle of reading uh, a chapter by John Zizoulis on the Cappadocian contribution to Trinitarian theology. I've knocked over my bookmark. Trinitarian theology today. Um, it, was, it was published in 1995, so it, it's quite an old book, really. But it's kind of giving me an overview of some of the contributors to the Trinitarian Renaissance of that period. Um, so people like Jensen... Schwabel, Zizoulas, um, Gunton, people like that. Um, I thought it'd be easier to read these kind of short chapters to get an overview of their thought than to go through whole big tomes, um, which has been helpful so far. I was interested to see in uh, Schwabel's article that he actually anticipates Karen Kilby's criticism of social Trinitarianism as projection five years prior to Karen Kilby's paper, Perichoresis and Projection. Um, and I thought it was quite interesting, but he seemed to kind of like just ignore it uh, f for the moment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was interesting to see. There are still a lot of the assumptions that have been overturned by more recent Trinitarian theology present, East West distinctions in theology, um, suspicions of substance metaphysics. Um, a kind of blaming of the Western conception of Trinitarianism as producing all kinds of theological ills. Those kind of things are still present, but you can see uh, a more critical, uh, there's beginning to be a more critical approach to those kind of assumptions. Uh, what else did Schrobel say? Um, he basically introduced the book with, with this introduction, but he was saying how it's very difficult to see how successful all this stuff will be in the long run and I thought that was very insightful of him especially now we can look back and kind of see where that, that kind of theological movement was headed and going wrong slightly and what it was contributing I think now we're in a better place to appreciate the contribution of people like Maltman and Pannenberg and Jensen um, but also treat them critically one other thing I noticed, I read Jensen's article, he kind of like talks about how if like the biblical narrative is um, a way in which we can definitively think about God, then we must think of God in terms of like narrative. It was all, it was all very odd, all very Jensen. Um, and then after that, I've been reading uh, Zizoulas, as I said, and his thoughts on the Cappadocian contribution. Here again, there's still that emphasis on East-West split because we're yet to see any um, major contrib contribution to um, this kind of stuff by people like Lewis Ayres and um, uh, Michelle Barnes. Um, but I'm pretty sure that papers are about to be written at the time this was published, 1995. Uh, one thing I've noticed as well is that Zizoulas' um, discussion of the Cappadocians and their response to the Eunomians, so those kind of extreme Aryans, um, mentions nothing of the doctrine of divine simplicity, uh, partly because it's clear that those kind of thinkers um, like Zizoulas and Maltman abhor the doctrine of divine simplicity. Um, I think that's contributed to the kind of lack of treatment of that in the discussion when it seems to me from more recent Trinitarian writings like um, McCall in his book on um, or his chapter in Advanced Trinitarian Theology where he talks about Trinity doctrine plain and simple um, and in Lewis Eyre's book again divine simplicity is a key feature of Cappadocian thought and the Cappadocian response to the Eunomians like simplicity features heavily. Um, so I'm kind of taking some of Zizula's stuff with a pinch of salt, uh, aware of some of the shortfalls and aware of some of the things that might have changed in patristic scholarship over the last few years. Uh, I just thought I'd sum up those things right now before I forget. And uh, I'll sign off and probably bring an update later or tomorrow. Uh, we'll see.